One of the things you have to keep in mind when you're looking at how media report on something like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not only understanding what's there in the story, but more importantly, what's not there, what's being left out. In that sense, absence is as vital as presence in terms of how people make sense of the story. Context is everything. The context that's often missing from the current reporting is that the Palestinian uprising is a revolt against the 34-year-long occupation. And if there's no occupation in the story, then the story doesn't really make sense, and the occupation is frequently missing. A typical TV news report, for example, um, on you know ABC News will show dramatic pictures of, of these confrontations where Palestinians are, are confronting Israeli troops and the Israeli troops are responding. But Friday saw more clashes in Hebron between stone-throwing Palestinian youths and Israeli soldiers armed with For most Americans who don't understand the history of the conflict, uh, this is an example of you know, riots that are going on where uh, the, the authorities are taking measures to crack down. What's not mentioned is the fact that these confrontations are taking place on occupied territory, uh, that the, the Israeli troops who are there are defending um, an occupation that's, that doesn't have any international legitimacy, that's illegal. The American media, they are concentrating only on the deeds, on the violence, and not on the reasons, and not on the basic facts of occupation. Israeli troops were pelted with stones, and they responded with tear gas and rubber bullets. This is not presented as an army using its arsenal against uh, young people who are uh, largely unarmed and uh, who are protesting because of the occupation, the siege, the, the total oppression of a whole nation. The lack of context is so dramatic that only 4% of the network news reports on the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip mentioned that the West Bank and Gaza Strip are occupied. The Israeli military sends its troops into the occupied territories to defend what is considered an illegal occupation. And when the population there resists, uh, Israel is, is presented as being under attack. Israel was responding to an attack today. Israel has beefed up forces following a Palestinian mortar attack. They don't present it as saying Israel is the aggressor, Israel is killing people on their own land, in their own homes as an occupier. But no, Israel is defending itself. To Sharon, the West Bank invasion is simple self-defense. The Israeli Prime Minister reiterated Israel's right to self-defense. Israel's basic posture is anything but defensive. Israel is the only country in the world right now which, in contravention to UN Security Council resolutions, maintains tens of thousands of heavily armed troops outside its borders in somebody else's country for the sole purpose of taking their land away from them and in the process forcing them to live under the worst form of tyranny imaginable, which is a foreign military dictatorship. The tanks, the gunships, the snipers, they are all on Palestinian land. And I don't see why they have to protect themselves on our land if they're occupying our land. That, that context is always missing. A crowd throwing stones and homemade stun grenades at the soldiers, the troops opening fire, killing two Palestinians and injuring... So even when Israel is busy murdering people in cold blood, it is always presented as part of the self-defense mechanism of Israel. When Israel in the occupied territories now claim that they have to defend themselves, they are defending themselves in the sense that any military occupier has to defend itself against the population they're crushing. Prime Minister Ariel Sharon justified the siege as self-defense. You can't defend yourself when you're militarily occupying somebody else's land. That's not defense. Call it what you like, it's not defense.